Welcome back to Weave Along with Eloise. I'm Eloise of Finchyfield. It occurred to me that this is my one year YouTube anniversary. Well, I missed it a couple of weeks ago. How cool is that? I didn't think I'd be doing this for a year, but here I am, still having fun with it. The joy is in the doing. Today we're heading to Northern Germany to study a piece that came from that area in the 8th to 11th century. While the Danes, Saxons, and Angles were fighting over who got control over Schleswig Holstein, that is the area just south of Denmark, the Frisians were setting up a settlement just outside of Tunning. The dig, now known as Eisenhof, is named after the farm that was in that location, was subject to a lot of excavations during the 1960s. The findings show that the settlement was used extensively from the 8th to 11th century, and then sporadically through the Middle Ages, and then eventually abandoned. During that 400-year period, at least 68 different buildings were erected and then later demolished on that site. The excavations revealed an abundance of excellently preserved finds, including bone and bone tools, textiles, wooden objects, leather scraps, metal weapons, and numerous animal bones and other food waste. And it's amazing what you can learn from the cesspits. The results of several years of study of these finds has led to numerous publications and has been an important source for research for material culture in the southern Scandinavia and northern German areas. There are several theories about how this one centimeter wide band was made. According to Egan Hansen, who published a book in 1990 on tablet weaving, he describes it as a simple plated pattern on a tabby ground weave. And his theory was that it was four threads per card. He also theorized that it was made out of wool and some sort of vegetable fiber, possibly linen, which the wool was springy and the linen was rigid, so therefore it gave it that raised texture. But other weavers disagree and don't think that this was one of those 3-1 broken twill patterns. Another tablet weaver, Guido Gelhar, he has a, a website and I will link it below. He looked at the pattern and said, this pattern isn't even right. It had some weird turns to it. So he made adjustments to the turning sequences. So he created a, a pattern with the, all the corrections in it. So while there's some debate about whether or not this is historically accurate, it is the pattern that we're going to be doing today. Now, on the other hand, Hans Jürgen Hunt had written about this piece in an article for the, the Coastal Archaeology of Schleswig Holstein and suggested that this was a single color band and it was done in a skip hole weave pattern using 18 or 19 cards. I'm going to be doing the Hansen slash Guido Gelhar pattern for this part of the Laurel Kingdoms project because I need something with two colors. Because today we are celebrating the Kingdom of Artemisia. The Kingdom of Artemisia was formed in 1997, also known as Anno Societatis 23. If you want to know more about what Anno Societatis means, and what the SCA is, go to SCA.org. It was the 14th kingdom of the SCA, and it currently covers Utah, Montana, southern Idaho, and the parts of Colorado and Wyoming that are west of the Continental Divide. And their colors are black and yellow. So for the Egan Hansen Guido Gelhar project, you're going to need 21 cards and two colors of thread. Grab your loom and your cup of tea, and let's get started. Now, once you have all of your materials assembled, that is your loom, 21 cards, ooh, sharp scissors, a pattern, and your lazy cape with two colors in it. And I'm going to set that on the floor because that's where it goes. I'm going to move the peg into the beginning position, tighten it up so that's ready to go. And I've got my cup of tea ready to go. The only thing I left I have to do is roll up my sleeve. Without them being rolled up, I tend to snag them on the pegs. So, away we go. Now I'm realizing, of course, that the way I have this pattern drawn up is red and white with a yellow border. That's not the colors I'm going for today. I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go yellow on the black. Although this is going to look a little bit like a knight's chain when I'm done, so maybe I should do it the other way around. Yeah, I think I'm going to do black on yellow, so a dark color on a lighter background. And then, yeah, then the borders are going to still be yellow no matter what. Starting with yellow, we have four threads that are all yellow. 
I've only got the one spool of yellow at the moment. I may have more spools, but um, my uh, creative space here, my filming area, has uh, kind of been taken over by my daughter's stuff. Um, we're getting ready to do the floors in her room now, and uh, that means all of her stuff had to be out of her room, and it kind of moved into here. Not ideal, but uh, it's temporary. So after I get this warped up today, I think I'm going to start doing some flooring in the other room. I did finish up the flooring in my bedroom, and it looks fabulous. I could post a picture of it. So next up is her room. And then after that, my eldest. And then after that, I think we're going to hire somebody to do the hallway because I don't know how to do the bullnosing and all that. That's, that's much more complicated. So card number one, following all the pegs, top to bottom, front to back. leaving a nice long tail at the beginning and end. Card number one. Remember, uh, all these are labeled clockwise. It's hard to see, but this is A, B, C, D, clockwise. I turn the face of the cards toward me, and S threaded will go through the back of the card. So all four threads will be S threaded, if you try to do S and Z in the same card, the cards won't turn. So don't even go there. All right, pull all the threads taut. We're gonna go left over right twice. Pull it tight. And then right over the left once. And that's a surgeon's knot and that will not come undone. I think I make that joke every time. Push all the threads back. Don't spill your tea while you're doing this. That's very important. And now we're ready for card number two, which will be two colors. So we need two black and two yellow, and I can thread both of them at the same time. You hold both of them, you put your finger between so that they don't twist around each other, and you thread them both at the same time. This really speeds up the whole process, being able to do two, three, or four threads at once. So if you have more than one spool of yarn, this would be the time to use them. And again, nice long tail. Card number two is also S threaded. And if we're doing the white is actually black, it's going to be confusing. Okay, so A and D are the black threads, and then B and, is that right? Yeah, B and C are the yellow threads. This is going to be confusing. B and C are the yellow threads. I wonder if I should just go ahead and, no, I'd have to redo the whole thing. Ugh. I'm going to scoot these threads back a little bit before I tie this down. You can use Smokey. We moved him downstairs for the duration of this filming. But he can hear me, so he's going to be whistling my tunes. He does that. He's got a different tune for every person in the house. 
different things that we've whistled at him, he's identified that as our little song. So card number three. And you know, every single one of these cards is going to be S-threaded, so that makes this so much easier. Okay, so A and B are the black threads. This is going to be a little weird, once again, because this is not a skip hole weave. Every line is a little bit different in its turning sequence, so I'm probably going to trip myself up for quite a while. All right. And this is going to be so the rest of the threading is going to be pretty much the same way so I'm going to speed it all up now because I don't have anything further to say from just a few minutes ago that I was confusing myself a little bit by having um, different colors on the pattern than what I'm going to be using. And I thought, okay, well, to really unscramble my brain, I'm going to go ahead and put the colors where they're supposed to be. And as I was looking at it, I thought, you know what? I really don't think the turning sequence is quite right. Um, and it, I, it dawned on me that there were only 14 picks in the one that I was threading. So I needed to redo it anyway because 14 is not divisible by four. I, I redrafted it so now it has 16 picks and of course that will be available in the blog. As I did this I said you know what the turning point of the of this angle is really in the wrong place. It should have another row down here and I messed with it some more and then I realized that the middle cards here are not twist neutral and I apologize. And I messed with it some more and ended up just kind of giving up. Um, I haven't been able to figure out the proper way to make this twist neutral. So it is what it is. But in the meantime, 
I'm going to go ahead and start weaving this. Of course, I'll put any updates that I discover into the blog. You can always go back and look to see if there's anything new, but this should work. So let's give it a try. I've already got it warped up. I might as well go for it. You'll take your shuttle and you'll pull the tail through the shed, which is that opening between the upper threads and the lower threads. Nestle it down in there. Leave about a finger or two worth of space between the knots and that first thread. And you'll leave a long tail on the right. Turn all your cards forward. You want to pull that tail back through and send your shuttle back through. Turn all your cards forward again. Send the shuttle through. And if you want, you can send the tail through one more time and this will fully anchor it into place. I just decided to start doing that right now. Okay, so give it a nice tug. You'll snug up all the threads so that they're all lying neatly against one another. You don't want them too tight, but you don't want them too loose either. Turn the cards forward again. Press down with your shuttle. Pull through and leave a little loop behind. This helps with your edge tension, your salvage tension. Press down, pull that loop through, and leave a loop behind. All right, so you've gone forward one full rotation, so all of your A and D holes should be back at the top again. And now I am ready to start my pattern. Now, often what I do is I, when I follow along on a pick line, I just look at how many forwards and how many backwards, and I move the cards into position following that. So I have two cards going forward and one back. Then two forward, one back. Three forward, one back. Two forward, three back, one forward, two back, one forward, one back, and one forward. So all the cards are slid backwards and forwards. So the ones that are toward you will turn toward you. That's backwards. Cards forwards will turn forwards. And you're on your shuttle through. Press down, pull the loop, and leave a loop behind. Now, pick two, unlike the skip hole weaves, pick two is completely different than pick one. So you move all your cards back together again. Three forward, one back. Two forward, one back. Three forward, four back. One forward, two back. One forward, two back. And one forward. Backwards, cards backwards. Forwards, cards forwards. Away we go. I'm really hoping that this pattern works because I was questioning everything as I went along. Four and one, two and one, three and two, one and two, one and three. Oh, it looks like the sun is coming out. That's pretty exciting. I was anticipating rain all day today. I will take the sun. One and three. One and two. One and four. Two and one. Three and two. Tail's getting in the way, so I'll move that down. Leave a loop behind. Pick number five. 
One, two, three, and one, two, and one, five, and five, three, and three. Well, so starting to look like something. That's good. And this is all a big experiment. One, four, and two, two and one and one. Seven, three and two, three and one, two and one, three and one, two and two. I always feel like there should be something I should be talking about right here. I never know what to say. One and two, two and one, three and two, one, three, two and three. And I tell you, I'm pretty excited about things starting to open up again. I am Really looking forward to camping, SCA events, getting together with friends, sitting down in restaurants, and all the things that we haven't been able to do in months and months and months. But more than anything, I am looking forward to seeing my parents again. I don't know if I mentioned it before, my parents live in Canada, and the Canadian border's been closed. So I haven't seen them since Thanksgiving of 2019. Well, I haven't seen my dad since Thanksgiving of 2019. My mom actually came down into the States and went down to visit her sisters. Um, it was a little bit of a family emergency, so she went down to help out with that. And um, she managed to find a little bit of time to pop by and and we visited, and then she had to go back home. But I'm really looking forward to going up there and, and having a nice visit, and not have to worry about being in quarantine for two weeks or having to do even more testing. Of course, I am fully vaccinated now, so I shouldn't have to, but you know, the rules are the rules. Sometimes the rules don't make sense. Three and one. Well, this is turning out rather nice. I'm not sure if this is correct, but boy, it's looking pretty nice. I, I think I like this. One and three. One and two, and two, three, one, two, one and four. All right, well, you want my tension's just a little tight. There we go. I have seen the question frequently about how much tension you should have on your cards. Um, I find that there's kind of a happy medium. You can have too much tension, which makes it hard to turn the cards, or too little tension where the cards kind of flop around too much. So there's kind of a happy medium, and, and you really have to find out 
I guess, by feel, what works best for you. Now, because these are four threads per card, the cards are less likely to be squirrely, which uh, well, makes this pattern a little bit easier. But, um, yeah, you don't, you want to have a little bit of bounce in the threads. You don't want it too rigid. not to have to use a pencil. <laughs> it's kind of a almost a new experience today. It's been such a long time since I've done four threads. What are you looking forward to after COVID? What are you looking forward to doing that you have not been able to do in a very long time? What is the first thing on your list? If you had the freedom to do anything today, what would you do? I mean, with money in mind, of course. I mean, if I had no restraints on on money, the first thing I'd do is hop on a plane and fly to Europe and go to the museums and maybe see if I could go to uh, some castles or chateaus or something. All right. Oh, this is looking really nice. Looks really crisp. There's not really long floats. There's a couple of floats here, but they're not super long. I think it's looking pretty good. Now, I'm at the end of the repeat. I just finished 16. You want to double check to make sure all your cards have AD back at the top again, and mine do, so that worked out well. Awesome. Yeah, okay, it looks pretty ugly right at the beginning, but, you know, after that, boy, that looks nice. You look at that. That's really pretty. And no, that's not blue. That is black. I don't know why the color's coming out funny on this. Was trying to decide whether to do yellow on black or black on yellow but I thought the yellow on black would look too much like a knight's chain well it turns out this is a two-sided pattern so yeah either one is fine
Let me see. Love you too. Hi. Hi.